Hey friends and welcome to Sustainable Prepping, your home for fear-free emergency preparedness and a sustainable life. My name is Brecky and today I'm going to be showing you how I make simple vanilla and brown sugar quinoa porridge. Now, if you have never had quinoa porridge, it is a wonderful alternative to oatmeal and is a great way to use up things that are already shelf stable and in your emergency pantry. If you're new here, I wanna say a great big welcome. I'm so glad you found this slice of the internet. And if you're not new, I wanna say welcome back. I'm so glad you're with me again. Today I'm showing you a really simple meal that I used to eat all the time. I was vegetarian for 16 years. And so thinking up interesting breakfast ideas when you don't eat bacon and eggs uh, was something that I enjoyed doing and one of the things I ate a lot of was this quinoa porridge with all kinds of different toppings. It's a great base that you can add to your pantry shelves whether for easy rotation in your everyday life or as an excellent shelf stable alternative to oatmeal. Particularly if you're somebody who's grain free or you're sensitive to grains for your family, quinoa is great. Quinoa is actually a seed, it's not a grain, so it's a nice alternative if you're someone who it needs to be sensitive to how much grains you're taking in, whether for dietary reasons or allergens. Um, and you can get it in little packages if you wanna experiment. My in-laws brought me a little bit of quinoa a while ago that I'm using up. But if you're someone who isn't a huge fan of savory quinoa, cooking it like you might cook rice, this might be a great way for you to incorporate it into your meal plans. I love it, it's great now that the weather is getting cold here and the Appalachian Mountains and it's just a really wonderful alternative to oatmeal which can you know texture wise get a little bit boring so let's get into this real fast I am going to leave the link to the recipe I'm following today down below there's a ton of recipes they are all really quite similar but I like this one because you can use all shelf stable ingredients you don't need anything fresh to make this and then you can use this base to add whatever you have on hand that you love but we'll talk more about that at the end the first thing I want to show you is this is my quinoa. Now I've had it soaking for about an hour and a half. Um, soaking quinoa is helpful, but you don't have to. I just think the texture comes out better. So I'm going to take a cup and a half of quinoa. I've soaked it for an hour and a half. I'm going to rinse it real fast. So that's the first thing we're going to have. Then for this recipe, you're going to want milk. Now I'm going to use a can of coconut milk because this is shelf stable. So if you're cooking from your emergency pantry, you might want to add several cans of coconut milk for things like porridge and also things like curry. So I have several of these I'm gonna use. Then I'm gonna use some maple syrup. Now this is some really awesome bourbon maple syrup that we got. Um, we're almost out of it, but I really, really wanna use some for today. But any maple syrup will do, and if you don't have maple syrup, you can substitute a little bit of brown sugar. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. We've got Redmond's Real Salt up in here. This is one of our very favorite salts to use. We also use pink Himalayan salt. Anything will work. You could even use iodinized table salt if that's all you have. Though, um, a really good rock salt or sea salt is gonna have a richer flavor and better nutrient contents. And finally, we're gonna add a little bit of cinnamon. Um, any cinnamon will do. Ceylon cinnamon is better for you than the other kind of cinnamon, but use what you've got. You can also use things like pumpkin spice. Uh, pumpkin pie spice, you can use things like nutmeg. Whatever you have on hand, we're gonna be using cinnamon for this basic recipe. Now one of the things you could do is you could sub out the maple syrup and you could do brown sugar and vanilla. That's another option that you could do. This is just a really basic recipe and from this basic porridge, you can add fresh berries, you can add frozen berries, you can add nuts, you can add dried berries or dehydrated or um, freeze dried berries. Whatever you have on hand, you can mix into this sweetened porridge real easy. We're going to use the instant pot, but you can do this on the stove. I love, I love this recipe because after the soaking, it comes together pretty quick. So let's rinse our quinoa and get started. So this is our quinoa in our instant pot pot insert. Now just like with rice, you're going to want to make sure that you pick out any imperfections, anything that looks extra hard, anything that looks like it doesn't belong, like rocks or anything, um, because even though this is a seed and not a grain, it's often treated like a grain in sort of the production process. So just make sure you're picking out anything that's not ideal. Then we're going to add our milk. 
And again, I am just using some simple coconut milk. You can use dairy milk if you have it. Um, if you're making this fresh, use the dairy milk that you have. I just want to show you how you can use all shelf-stable ingredients. You can also use other nut milks, almond milk, rice milk, oat milk, any milk that you have for your family that works is great. You could also just use water. It just won't be as creamy. So I would really suggest adding a milk in. <coughs> your milk, you're going to want to add one and a half cups of water. This is filtered water from our Berkey. We're just adding it right on in there, followed by all of your seasonings of choice. Again, you can do uh, maple syrup and cinnamon, which is what I'm doing, but you could also do brown sugar and vanilla. And these both make a great, really basic porridge that you can then add other things to. So for this recipe, it calls for a quarter cup of maple syrup. and that's gonna use all of this up. It's not gonna be quite enough, but that's okay. I don't need it to be too, too, too sweet. Now the recipe calls for a quarter cup of maple syrup. I didn't have enough to do the full quarter cup, but that's okay because this is a bourbon maple syrup and it's quite flavorful, so I don't need all of that sweetener. Again, you can make this to taste. We're also going to do a full teaspoon of cinnamon. Well, I'll just do that so some of it kind of spilled out. I don't normally measure this sort of thing, but I thought I would for the video. Ha 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 on me, right? We're also going to do about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And again, I'm just going to eyeball it. You can always add more. It's always better to go light when you make it. And you're done. I'm going to give it a quick stir around and then we're going to pressure cook it for a few minutes. All right, I'm doing a quick stir of everything. This is what it looks like pre-pressure cooking. And now we are going to pressure cook this for 12 minutes on the low pressure setting. You can use the rice setting if you have that, but you want 12 minutes on low pressure. That's it, I've got everything locked and loaded. I've got the back turned back, the lid on for my Instant Pot, and I have the pressure level set to low, 12 minutes, However, that translates to your pressure cooker, your electric pressure cooker. Um, different models are different, but you want about 12 minutes on low or the rice setting if you have a rice setting. I am now going to enjoy a cup of coffee while this cooks. I'll check in with you when it's done. Now I'm letting it release manually, but I let it come down off of pressure for about five minutes before I did the manual release. And I'm really excited. I'm hungry. The smells really good. So I'm excited to dig in. Now for me this morning, I'm going to add some chopped pecans because I love pecans. I'm originally from Georgia, so I'm a pecan girl. And I might add a little bit of chopped apple if I feel like going and grabbing one and chopping one up. Ooh, maybe the babies ate them all, so maybe I won't. We'll see. But you can really add anything. Now I like nuts in my porridges because the creaminess of the porridge and something a little bit crunchy like a nut really works for me. But honestly, you do you. You can add whatever you like and whatever flavors you enjoy and whatever you have around the house. Okay, here we go. Let me take you in. All right, and so you can see it almost looks like rice. It has this um, really kind of fluffy consistency and it's, you know, it's like a porridge. It's just like a porridge. Now, if you are someone who likes a really creamy porridge, you could also add more milk to this. You can add a little bit of milk and make it uh, like an old fashioned porridge. Y'all, this smells so good. I cannot wait to get myself a bowl. So I'm gonna dress mine up, show you how I eat it, and give you a few recommendations for things that you can do to add this into your storage. So one of the things we always keep on hand are frozen fruit, particularly berries. Our little girls love these, and with uh, teething molars, these have been a really nice snack because it cools off and helps to kind of slightly numb their, their sore gums, and it's good for them. So we keep a lot of frozen berries around the house. Um, but you can add, like I said, said dehydrated or freeze-dried uh, fruits to your porridge particularly if you're going to add a little bit of additional milk you can add in um, like freeze-dried fruits and they'll soak up a little bit of the milk and get this really nice creamy yummy consistency as they kind of 
add in. Um, I'm just adding a little bit of nuts. I love pecans, like I said, so I'm going to add a little bit of nuts. That's what it looks like. I'm going to dig in, but this is a really great way to add some variety to your breakfasts. Lots of people love oatmeal. I love oatmeal, but the consistency can get a little bit boring if you have it every single morning. And if you're looking to add some variety to your breakfast, but you want a nice, easy, hot breakfast, if you're looking to add something totally self-stable, this entire meal, aside from any of the fixings that you might add, is totally shelf-stable. Quinoa, shelf-stable for over a year. I'm pretty confident it's closer to two to three years, but I will double check and leave it in the uh, comments in the description below. But quinoa shelf stable for over a year. You've got your coconut milk, which is canned shelf stable for well over a year. You've got your spices. You've got maple syrup, which is shelf stable indefinitely. You could use honey. You could use brown sugar. And this is a great way to use your staple items that you already have on hand. Particularly if you bought that quinoa in a panic buy about a year ago and you need to figure out how to use it. Learning to make this really yummy porridge, man, it's a great way to use it and to get used to it and to use what you have um, and to and to really eat what you store and store what you eat. Friends, comment down below and let me know if you have tried this quinoa recipe. Do you make quinoa porridge? I make another version where you actually cook the berries in with it. I also do a really yummy pumpkin uh, porridge. They're just, they're so good. And if we have an instant pot, it makes it super, super easy. If you do, let me know if you have any uh, recipes you'd like to share. If you haven't, are you going to try it? I'd love to know if you're going to try out this recipe. I hope you guys are all doing well and until the next video. Bye.